always hey cutie so today in this video i will be sharing with you 20 amazing easy but also awesome and rewarding ways to ensure that you receive nothing less than an a plus in college and this doesn't matter what university you attend as some of you may already know i graduated magna cum laude i studied finance management and communication slash public relations i earned my way into the national society of collegiate scholars um, international honor society called beta Ga beta gamma sigma also a sophomore year i was an intern at the white house in the office of digital strategy i also was an honor student at my university received dean's list many consecutive times so i definitely have learned a lot of different methods and strategies to ensure that what's on that transcript actually represents excellent effort and just studious studious study and just A plus A1 all across the board. So I put in the work and I have these 20 things that I'm going to share with you. So let's just get right into it, shall we? So number one is to maintain a solid moral compass. Before I get into anything specific, it doesn't matter. I just have to, this is just so important. When you're in college, there are a lot of vices. There are a lot of folks that are surrounding you that can easily pull you away from your studious path. Also, having a moral compass, you need to grasp that early. That's something that will carry you throughout your entire life. So when you're in college and also when you are in the workforce, Maintaining a solid moral compass is just intangible and it also uh, spearheads many intangible qualities that are just perfect for any student, for any parent, and also for any CEO, any, any boss, any entrepreneur, any speaker or leader, whatever you name it. So whether you're anchoring 1 Corinthians 14.40 regarding letting all things be done decently and in order, or whether you're anchoring Proverbs 3.13 about acquiring knowledge and seeking wisdom, whatever it may be, even if you have to start your day off with prayer, then make sure you do that. Let's move on to number two. Surround yourself with positive peers. The power of uh, the law of attraction is really important. I can't really, I don't really have to say anything else or add anything else to that, but surround yourself with positive people. Even if you find someone that you make that may be friendly or that you may like, but they have bad habits, if you find that those bad habits are wearing you down and influencing you in the wrong way, detach yourself and focus on your studies. Let's go to number three. I want you to plan accordingly. So by doing, by saying that, that's I'm going to uh, add more uh, specificness to this. So at the beginning of the semester, I need you to print. I, I want you to succeed here and God put me on this earth to see you to see you succeed and to inspire and to motivate you so I want you and I need you to print a weekly calendar and a monthly calendar so if uh, the semester is what like three or four months print all of those calendars that's your monthly view then print your weekly view on those calendars you are to put your office hours uh, when assignments are due when you will have meetings and when events are okay so that's number three at the same time, in addition to having, this is what I did, in addition to having a uh, paper calendar or paper schedule, whether it's on a calendar or planner, also make sure that you digitize when things are due in your appointment. So have your phone and plan and put everything in your phone so that you receive those amazing alerts that technology has for us. Okay, so number four. Plan your assignments seven days before they are due. Yes, this is like this is like one of the golden ways to succeed in college and to ensure that you always receive uh, a, a rewarding grade. Plan seven days ahead of time. Why, Destiny? Why do I have to plan seven days ahead of time? Well, if you plan seven days ahead of when the assignment is due, you can always ensure, always ensure that you will be able to go to your professor or your TA, or wherever you're going with, but most of the time to your professor to see what is missing, what needs to be added. And remind, remind me, you already, you already would have been meeting with your professor regularly, but to ensure that you're not cramming, you also have a lot of things that are also due, complete your assignments seven days ahead of time. And even if you are in group projects, this is extremely important. 
because I had some times where some at, at times in groups they really didn't like that plan. They really didn't think that they could fulfill the responsibility of completing the work seven days ahead of time. But one of the one of the times when they didn't listen, all of the work was was not evenly distributed and it was it was uneven. They didn't like how that felt. I was like, see, this is exactly why we need to follow what we're having the seven day plan. So even like I said, if your group members don't agree, then make sure that you have your work done seven days ahead of time. But just also tell them that this is how it has to be done in order for us to receive, in order for one for us to receive um, a rewarding grade, and also two for us to really enhance our education. Okay, so number five is to take charge of your study. You have to self study. Do not assume that the professor, that the teacher is giving you everything that you need to succeed because sometimes professors cherry pick what information they will give you. Go to your library, go to your school's library, use the internet, use many different sources, watch videos to enhance and enrich your study so that you can really anchor the principles and the fundamental things that you need to anchor uh, with your study. Also, when you before you even begin to study the, the, the chapter and what the professor needs you to do, make sure that you have a solid no knowledge of the definition of the, what, whatever it is that you're studying. So if you're studying literature, if you're studying economics, if you're studying finance, if you're studying psychology, know what that is. Know what that is. If somebody was to ask you, what is the definition of psychology? What is psychology? What is psychology? What does it mean? How does it help others? Know that for whatever discipline or whatever class you are studying. Okay, so let's move on to number six. Meet with your professor at least two times a week. Have that on your schedule. Meeting with your professor is crucial. Not only does it show that you are an engaged student, but you're also playing a proactive part in your education. You should also um, understand that professors are proactive Folks in your education, they're stakeholders as well, so meet with them. They're there to help you, and also you're paying for that. You're, you, you are paying, really put it like this, students' tuition helps to pay professors' salaries. So you should take advantage of all the resources that are there. Okay, number seven. Always read the book material before class and always take notes. That way, if you have questions, you can ask them, and also that ensures that you are active in class participation and also in just class talk sessions, period. Number eight, if you are dealing with a quantitative discipline or a quantitative class, all of the formulas that are necessary that you need, write those down either on memory cards or on a notebook at the beginning of the semester. Do not wait, do not even, don't try to memorize the formulas incrementally. Review it. Review the formulas in a repetitive based manner. So this is a repetitive approach. It's not only to anchoring the formulas in your mind, but to also understanding what the formulas actually do, what they represent. So look through the entire book, confirm with your professor the formulas that are necessary and that you all will be covering and start going through them every week. Write them down however you like to write them down and just review them in that way. Okay, number nine, begin large research papers at the beginning of the semester. Do not wait. So um, you'll have your outline, you'll have, you have to acquire your sources, you have to um, you have your first paragraph, your second paragraph, all these, all these different components of your research paper. Start that early if you have one. Number 10, okay, we are halfway through this amazing list of these just awesome principles. So number 10, during midterm week or the middle of the week, I call this uh, midterm progress, email your professors, or, yeah, email them because you want this, you don't just want to go by word of mouth, you want, you want this to be solid. Email your professor and ask them where you stand as of this time. If it just so happens that your professor posts grades on Blackboard, that's amazing. Um, that way you can actually see where you are but if they don't post things like class participation, then those are things where you want, but if you're graded on it, that's something that you want to know. You want to know where you stand because the middle of the semester can actually be a great turning point. If you're doing well, you know what you need to continue to do. 
And if you're not doing so well, you know what you need to rectify. And you know how to turn your deltas into strengths. So always ask for your overall grade, your class participation grade, and any other grade that, that you need to know, especially if he's any grade that's on the syllabus. Number 11, this is, ah. this is actually one of my favorites and it's dress the part. You can go to, you can, you can dress and you can wear whatever you want, but I can guarantee you that if you dress for success and if you dress like success while you are attending your classes, you will feel motivated, you will feel inspired, you will feel positive, and you will feel worthy. And I definitely recommend that you dress the part throughout the semester. Okay, so, number 12. Now on test day, this is number 12, wear comfortable clothes on test day. That includes comfortable shoes. If it just so happens that the classrooms are cold, take a sweater with you. So on test day, definitely dress comfortably. Number 13, receive at least eight hours of sleep and make sure that you set a bedtime reminder. Sleep is important. It is crucial to our cognitive understanding, also to memorization, so many different things. So make sure that you receive every night at least eight hours of sleep. If you think that you can cram your way to an A plus and cram your way to, and cram your way to success, then that's wrong. You can't do that. Cramming is very, very bad. You need to, you need to study and you also need to sleep well. Okay, so number 14, keep in contact with your mom, with your grandparents, and also with your siblings. Your family keeps you grounded. Or whoever it is that you tap into that just has that love and that warmth and that positivity and that support, call them often and, 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 or write them and visit them if you can. Just do not alienate yourself from those folks that truly love you. Number 15, write test corrections on your test. After you test, write the test corrections. Anything that you've got wrong on your test, make notes of those problems and also um, show your professor your test correction and also ask your professor or confirm with him that you solved the problem correctly. Number 16, before a test, always ask the professor what material is covered. I have seen so many students fail and flunk tests because they were unsure about what they were actually being tested on. I don't know if they missed the email, if they didn't look at the syllabus, but sometimes professors change what's actually posted on the syllabus in comparison um, to what is actually on the test. So you have to stay informed. So always ask the professor, confirm what chapters and what material will be on the test before you actually start to, to study for the test. That's two weeks ahead of the test date. You probably should confirm with that. And number 17. Ask the professor, does he provide um, extra credit opportunities? Extra credit opportunities, one, are an excellent way to boost your grade if you need to, but also three, to immerse yourself in whatever it is that you're studying. You may find that the extra credit opportunity may be an event or a speaker series that really may enrich your education that is just oh so amazing. Okay, number 18, if you are in a group, meet regularly and this is actually one of my favorites as well i employed this um this was an excellent idea that i thought of and i'm glad that god touched my heart with it but if you are in a group create a google doc share it with everyone in your group make a calendar so make a i don't know a four by five or a five by four with dates in that calendar and on that calendar every group member can put the days of the week that they are available to meet Tell your group members that it's also, it will be helpful if they choose a color so everyone color codes their name. So let's say, prime example, Sarah, she's red. I'm, when I look through the calendar, I see all the days that Sarah is available in red. Let's say Destiny, Destiny, her color is pink. When you see pink in there, you know those are the days that Destiny can meet. That is just an amazing way for you to be able to look at a glance, even on your phone, if you can get the Google Doc app on your phone. You can see what days everyone is able to meet at the same time. You also can have that shared Google Doc to talk to each other, to paste things that you found. You can also paste resources for your group members. And you also can paste due dates in there. I, I employed that. I really mastered that senior year. It was amazing. Okay, so number 19, have your professor's email and contact information already saved in your phone. Put that in your phone at the beginning of the semester, the moment you receive his or her syllabus. And number 20, this is the last tip to ensure that you succeed in college and that you earn nothing less than an A. 
okay? Eat energy source foods. Eat energy source foods. I want to say it again. Eat energy source foods. Foods that are lively. Foods that do not turn into sugar once they digest. Stay away from too many carbs. You need carbs, but you don't need too many. Eat Drink a lot of water, eat a lot of healthy foods, okay, that make you awake, that make you radiant. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. An apple a day is also, an apple is great to eat before an exam. So those are my 20 tips and 20 principles, whatever you want to call them, 20 recommendations to ensure that you thrive and that you excel in college. These are great because they also are applicable to high school as well, but like, comment, and subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe today, babe. Okay? And also to my kids with parents in prison. This video, I have this, I have you in mind also with this video because I know that you face a lot of plights and a lot of struggles. But I, I had you in mind here. And I know that if you employ these, you will succeed and you will grow up to be the excellent leader and the excellent us. Uh, student that I know that you are here to be. So God is so good. God is just so good. And I will see you next time.